Years ago, I built new uh, pulleys for this lathe. This is a Grizzly uh, G, 4003G. Uh, and it had some vibration to it. So I built some new pulleys for it that had dual V-belt uh, pulleys. And the problem, take that all the way off. The problem was that they both vibrated at different, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, different levels, I guess different harmonic levels and it would set up a vibration in the uh in the lathe i'm just cleaning the top of this off i got oil and stuff all over it so what i did if i can get this off okay hold on so what I did is I built new uh, uh, serpentine or uh, micro, I think they call it micro V pulley. So it now takes one of these belts. It's just a single belt. So I built this pulley and I built this one. Hopefully that's coming through all right. Um, it's very easy to do. This was the most the most challenging because it had a taper that I just simply I took the old one, uh, chucked it up, and I got the compound set with a dial indicator at the same uh, taper angle. Then I put it back together, and then I chucked this pulley up and I bored that hole with that taper um, until it fit and the original um, idea here I also built this plate and the original idea I'm going to turn this on for you so that you can kind of see what's going on here uh, where are we at Okay, that'll be good. So let me let me flip the switch so you can see it's not running right now. I don't know if you can see how smooth that micro V belt is. But I also want you to see this plate and the reason I want you to see that is because the original idea was I was going to put a caliper from a motorcycle I was going to mount a motorcycle caliper there and put me a foot brake on this lathe I mean that still might happen sometime in the future but right now, I, I, I kind of once I got it put together and run it back up and running, I lost interest. Uh, I got too many projects going on, and I didn't have enough time to build. I, I was going to have to build a bracket uh, coming off here with a caliper, and it was going to be a hydraulic motorcycle caliper. The hose was going to go down the back. Let me turn this off. The hose was going to go down the back to a foot pedal right down below there. To where I could just hit it and stop stop the lathe. Okay, sorry about that. The uh, fire department siren test went off. But anyway, yeah, this helped lower the vibration tremendously on this lathe. Um, like I say before, the so the pulley setup on this lathe was a two V belt pulley, and the problem was whenever you snugged it up, one belt would be a little tighter than the other belt. And when it was running, you'd see that looser belt just sitting there flopping back and forth. 
and you could actually feel it in the lathe. I thought about just taking one belt off and just running a single belt, which is actually what I did for a little while while I was making these pulleys. And I'll put the part number, if you're interested, um, I'll put the part number of this belt in the description. That way you've kind of got a rough idea of what size belt you need to get if you decide to uh, to make a couple of pulleys yourself. And the way I made these, it was actually a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be, is I took, I took the, the belt once I ordered it, and I custom ground a high-speed bit to this profile. I also found a diagram online that kind of gave some measurements of what this profile uh, is as far as depth, width, and all that. So that helped me a lot. But basically, I use this as a guide whenever the high-speed cutter fit in there just perfect. I was happy with that. And then I made this out of steel simply because that's what I had on hand. And as far as the, uh, I think this is roughly about five and a half inches or so. I just measured the the uh, original pulleys and went off of that to make these the same, or pretty close to the same diameter. And then I just went and figured out how, what the spacing was on the belt and plunged the tool in, cut the grooves. And I'll take some close-up pictures if you're interested. And, uh, yeah, it turned out a lot better than I thought. This is just a solid piece of aluminum. Um, you know, it was just a piece that I ordered off eBay. And this was a solid piece of uh, steel. Um, I did have to broach the keyway in it uh, for this one. Like I said, this one's a tapered shaft. So I had to get the taper. And then whenever you tighten this nut or this bolt up... It pushes it on and seats that taper is the way that works. But, uh, you know, like I say, let me turn it back on because uh, it really helped the vibration. So, like I say, the next step will be to put a motorcycle brake caliper down here uh, so that I can have a, a brake on it. But that's down the road. Anyway, uh, and the reason I'm even videotaping this is it's not very often that I have my box pulled away so that I can take this side cover off. And I thought, you know what, I've got this out. I may as well do a quick video because I wish I would have been videotaping uh, YouTube videos back whenever I made this because this would have been a, a pretty cool project for people that have this style of a lathe and if you've got a little bit of uh, vibration in it and if you can see that or if you're trying to get the perfect finish and you can't figure out why there's just a slight little bit of uh, you know not that pretty a finish on your on your uh, material you might take a look at your belt setup and see if it's causing you know vibration or not anyway that's enough rambling on you guys take care uh and i'll see you on the next one